So the goal of the next lab is actually to commit a transaction that has several announcements. And so to see what is happening when the announcements change state from pre-prepared to prepared and then to committed, which makes the, the whole transaction committed. And so there is already a call to pre-prepare complete. And so you're going to need to actually do the same with prepare complete and commit complete to change these enlistments into the additional states of prepared and committed. And then in kernel, we'll set breakpoints to see when the enlistments are created, when they actually change states. It is to say when we call pre-prepare complete in New Zealand, uh, that it actually calls TM pre-prepare complete X in kernel. And the same thing for prepare complete and commit complete. The whole point is going to be to analyze the transaction object in kernel, which is the K transaction structure, and see the state transitions. And the same for the enlistment, which is the K enlistment structure. We're going to work with two enlistments as a way to analyze these two enlistments and the final transaction. Also, we'll see that the code that we provide actually has functions to monitor notifications when the changes ha appear. And so we'll be able to see that in New Zealand. Okay, let's get started. So let's have a look at the commit multi enlistment transaction that's C file. So it imports the KTM header already. It has a special mask for notification. It has a structure for notification that we're going to use later. It has a helper function to print a GUID, so just the actual integers that are part of the GUID, the identifier, global identifier. Then we have a helper function that takes an integer, which represents uh, one of these macros, and just print the description, the name of the, of the actual notification. So for instance, when we receive a notification for prepare state, we'll be able to print transaction notify prepare. So then um, you'll notice in all the labs in this course that we use the X prefix to indicate a wrapper. So this is an API that is public. So if we look for get notification resource manager here, the NT is just because it's actually a syscall. So this API in Windows will actually call the syscall. But basically the whole point of this function is to retrieve the next transaction notification from a specified resource manager from the notification queue. So we can see we pass a, man a resource manager handle and it's going to actually fill the transaction notification structure. So this is the handle to the resource manager. This is a pointer to a allocated buffer that receives information about the retrieve notification. This is the size of the previous structure. We specify a timeout that will be used if there is no notification in the queue it will just time out and exit. So typically we would use one second, so 1000 millisecond. Um, we can use additional arguments, which are not really relevant here. So basically here, we're pro providing the resource manager handle, the transaction notification structure, and this X get notification resource manager is just a wrapper around this known API get notification resource manager. And so the reason we do that in the code is because we handle errors. Like if it times out, we can print that it timed out and we can return an error saying, okay, it means there is basically no notification anymore. So in our, in our case, it's not really an error. It's just stay, saying, okay, we've, we emptied the queue. There's nothing to read anymore. And then we print, uh, the, what, what notification it is. So we use the actual function we've just seen, which actually take an integer and return the description. So this function is X get notification resource manager. And this is used into a loop in get notification resource manager all available. And this function takes again the resource manager handle a max number of attempts. So for instance, we want to say, oh, we want to read up to 10 notifications potentially. So it's going to call our X wrapper up to 10 times. And we specify the timeout. And if one of them at some point fails, it means their identification queue is empty. And basically, BRED will return false and we'll just exit the loop. Otherwise, we'll keep looping 
up to 10 times. Okay, so now we can analyze our main function. So we have handle being defined. We have a default grid for the resource manager, and then we have instructions for the actual lab. So again, same kind of skeleton. We create a transaction manager. We recover the transaction manager. We create a resource manager that is volatile. We recover the resource manager, and then we create a transaction. So here we can see two enlistments being created that are going to be part of the same transaction. And for each enlistment, we're gonna basically retrieve its grid using the get enlistment ID, which is a known API. Obtain the added fire of the specified enlistment. It's gonna fill the enlistment ID based on the handle. This is handy because in kernel, we'll be able to match which enlistment is which because we can compare it to userland. So this is just printing the grid in a beautiful user-friendly manner. Then we call the commit transaction async function, which is not documented, but basically it's gonna tell the transaction, okay, now we, are, we want to actually wait until the transaction is committed. And now we're going to a state where we're gonna change the state of the different enlistments. So first we read the default enlistment enlistment notification state. So this function, as we saw earlier, is going to read all the notification from the queue up to the max attempt. So in our case, it's going to read up to 10 notification. So we're going to read up to 10 notification just to empty the queue. Then we're going to change the state of the enlistment, both of them, the pre-prepare. So it's going to go from the pre-prepare state to the prepared state. And then to see it in New Zealand, we're gonna again read all the notifications and we see we use the get character function to wait. So we're gonna be able to break in the debugger, see what happens, what are the different structures feel being updated. And then we're gonna be able to continue the debugger and then hit a key in the target VM to be able to continue and see each step. So what we need to do basically is add a call to prepare complete and commit complete, which are two functions to actually change state. So we can see it's not actually documented on Google at least, but if we look for prepare complete maybe. Okay, you, 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 could, you could actually look for them on the MSDN on the kernel transaction manager. So you would be able to find them here. But the whole thing is, it's basically the same, but it's basically the same prototype as pre-prepare complete. So you can see here in ktmw32.h that you have pre-prepare complete, prepare complete, commit complete. So these functions are defined. So you need to, to add two calls, one for prepare complete and one for commit complete in here. And each time you call this function for the two enlistments, you can read the actual notification from the queue and see what happens. The whole point is to actually commit all the enlistments and as a consequence, make the transaction committed as well. Okay, it's your turn now.